Zoe's very kind. How are all of you this morning? Well, it's good to hear, good to hear. We're in a sort of run of dreary weather and winter will not release Washington from its grip. Um, so hopefully uh, if you're visiting from out of town, you will wander by the tidal basin and see the cherry blossoms because they are at least a week or so behind schedule, but it's always a, a good and uh, interesting thing to see as a herald spring. So all of you want to go to law school? You, you really want to go to law school? Okay, good, good. Um, you heard this morning, I think, a very interesting opening. I think the thing to take away from uh, these remarks are the fact that you don't exactly know where you're going to be when you start. Okay? You heard the, the, the nice and, and, and interesting observation that a large percentage of the jobs that will be available 20 years from now haven't even been invented yet. I have an older daughter who's a graduating senior um, who identified the field of nanotechnology when she was eight years old as a developing uh, industry that she wanted to follow and you know, uh, pursue uh, professionally um, as an engineer. Interestingly, over the 10 years that she watched this develop, um, the industry completely exploded and every major research university in the United States has built or is in the process of building uh, a brand new facility um, in that area over the last three years. So you have to approach this uh, with a bit of a crystal ball uh, and sort of look and say, well, you know, what is it that, that's going to happen here? But the other thing that you also have to do is find what kind of lawyer you want to be, what motivates you to actually pursue the law. Um, there are many different kinds of lawyers. Um, I've been lots of different kinds of lawyers over the last, oh my gosh, 20 years, okay? When I went to law school, I thought that I wanted to be a securities lawyer. Okay. So when I was in law school, I took all of these classes in corporations, securities, you know, all these kinds of things. After law school, I went and I worked for a white shoe Wall Street law firm and did securities cases, 10B5, all of these kinds of things. But in the back of my mind, one of the reasons that I wanted to be a lawyer, that I was inspired to be a lawyer, I originally wanted to be a veterinarian, but I got was bitten by a dog on my paper route. And then I talked to my dog's vet, and he said, oh yeah, 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 look at my arms. He pulled them up and all of these dog bites, and I said, eh, there may be a better way than that. <laughs> and one of the things that really motivated me was change, okay? In the back of my mind, I always thought it was important to make sure that, that everyone had an equal shot um, at uh, the American dream, that we all needed to be treated equally before the law. I remembered all the stories. My family's originally from West Tennessee. That's where I was born. I remembered all the stories that my family told me going back to the turn of the 20th century about what my family did, how my family became what it actually was. And I thought, this is all very interesting, and that all percolated back there. So even though I did not take one civil rights law class when I was in law school, um, Drew Days, who was um, Solicitor General under the Clinton administration, actually taught those civil rights law classes. My wife took them, I didn't. Um, and when he found out subsequently uh, what I was actually doing when I came here on the Hill, he said, hmm, perhaps you should have taken my class. Um, but one of the things that, that I did do when I was at my large law firm was to take every opportunity that I could to train myself in areas that were not necessarily the focus of the firm. Okay? So I want to go back and take that sort of initiative um, and use that as a theme to talk to you this morning. Um, so the first thing you want to do is, is, is find your motivation. Okay. The second thing that you want to do is take responsibility for executing that motivation. Okay. The thing about the law is, uh, and, and people won't necessarily label it this way, is that you are a, an income producing commodity. Your time and your labor is the money. It's the resource. Okay. We have a fantastic entertainment lawyer here. 
He bills by the hour. You will become very familiar with how you handle increments of six minutes. Yes. Okay? <laughs> okay. Every phone call, every copy, uh, every email, every document, all of this is part of a resource. So if you, for example, go to a large law firm, okay, all of your time from the time that you walk through the door and you sit down and you start working, you have to be accountable for that in some way because that's how the firm makes its money. Okay? And so you, as that labor resource, are going to be utilized in a way that's most profitable for the firm. Okay? Put that in the back of your mind. Okay? You are the resource. Okay? So how do you think that institution is going to use or evaluate your time or your efforts? Remember that because at the end of this whole process, they may have a series of objectives for you that are different from the ones that you set for yourself. Okay? So you have to go back and take responsibility for that initiative. Okay? In going to a law firm, for example, which is where I started, I'll talk about clerking in a second because that's a different issue and something that's very important. One of the things that I wanted to do was to ensure that at the end of a five-year period when I was then going to decide whether I was going to stay there or whether I was going to go somewhere else, was that I needed to be a stand-up lawyer. I needed to know how to go to court. I needed to know how to argue. I needed to know how to write briefs. I needed to know how to take depositions. Okay? Um, and that is something that I set as a goal for myself. A firm won't necessarily set that as a goal for you because you are a resource to be thrown at a problem. Okay. When I started at the firm, I was fortunate because I clerked. This is why I'm going to come back to that. I went straight on to a large piece of litigation. Okay. We had a six-month run uh, up to trial. In that six-month run up to trial, I had 47 depositions. Okay. Now, that was fortunate, but that was also a goal that I set. I also wanted to go to trial. I got to trial. Okay. Now, as a, as a, you know, first, second year associate at a major law firm, you sit in the back of the room. Uh, you're in the back of the courtroom, the big partners are up there arguing, they're making all of these statements, and you have to sit there and listen, take notes, take notes, take notes, because something will happen and someone will turn and look at you. That was the clue that, okay, there is a brief to be written about that last two minute exchange, hope you caught it, because now you're out the door to write the brief that has to be argued at the end of the day, or argued the next morning and you stay up all night and write it. Okay. That's that particular kind of experience. It's a great experience, okay? but you have to set that as a goal for yourself. The other thing that you have to do is to say, okay, do I want to be a stand-up lawyer? Do I want to argue in court? How do I get to argue in court? Okay. When you go to law school, if you set that as a goal for yourself, you uh, make sure that you go to a, a law school that has an excellent clinical program because that gives you a leg up. You'll hear about that from other speakers on the panel, different aspects of programs in law school that will actually prepare you to actually emerge from law school as a ready functioning lawyer. But the other thing that you can do within the context of firms is you can do CJA work. Okay? One of the things that I did was to represent indigent um, young drug dealers uh, in federal court in, in the Southern District of New York. Okay? That was the flip side of doing clinical work um, as a, a prosecutor for the New, New Haven DA's office. Okay? Um, we, you can do pro bono work. I did pro bono representation on the death penalty on immigration and did pro bono work uh, representing um, Chinese-speaking voters in New York City and African-American voters in West Tennessee, uh, where my family is from. Okay. This was a way of beginning to, over that five-year period of time at a law firm, decide what kind of lawyer I wanted to be. Okay. So at the end of that particular period, then I decided, eh, I want to get married. I'm going to move here to Washington. Ultimately, the way that I ended up at the House Judiciary Committee is because over the course of that five years working at the law firm, I worked on IP issues, civil rights issues, uh, crime issues, antitrust uh, you know, issues. Um, and those were all of the matters that were the jurisdiction of the House Judiciary Committee. So when Mr. Conyers was looking for someone who could actually you know, pinch hit across the, the you know, wide variety of legal matters that, that come up uh, under the jurisdiction of the committee, um, lobbyists called up and said, Keenan, uh, we have a job that has your name on it and you know, it can be something that can be very inspiring to you. I thought, 
Okay, I'll go, I'll meet Mr. Conyers. Uh, it was a great meeting. He hired me on the spot and put me to work. Okay, I've been very, very, very fortunate because when you go back and you think about what's your motivation to become a lawyer, it's like, like, hmm, this whole notion of doing good and making sure that you can actually represent the interests of, of people against large moneyed interests or to make sure that everyone is treated equally before the law regardless of any um, particular characteristic that they may possess. We've gotten a chance to do things like pass the Hate Crimes Prevention Act, pass the Voting Rights uh, Reauthorization, uh, pass the Emmett Till Civil uh, Rights Cold Case Act, to pass the Second Chance Act, to pass the Black Farmers uh, Reauthorization Act, and you know to work on HR 40. On those particular, I think five big pieces of legislation, I had a major role in that. In that, I actually wrote all of them. Okay? And that's not to talk about the, the minor sort of grist in the mill stuff, but this is the kind of thing that if you prepare yourself, you can actually go and have a major impact in the way that you dream about when you're a little kid. Okay? Why do I want to be a lawyer? I'm inspired by Thurgood Marshall. I'm inspired by Charles Hamilton Houston. I'm inspired by fill in the name. It is possible to do that. Okay? But you have to be very intentional about how you approach your career. Okay? Your career is a valuable resource, as you have heard this morning, but it is your own. You own it, and you must take ownership of it each and every day. Law school is tough. It is a long slog. Okay? Being a lawyer is tough. Okay? There's a lot of work. Okay? When you're starting your career, there's a lot of drudgery. But you have to remember, you have to be able to visualize your end goal. Think of your life in five-year increments. Where do I want to be now five years? There's a joke in that where my, my um, older daughter said, hmm, so if someone says to you, where do you see yourself in five years? She looks and she says, I don't know. I don't have 2020 vision because it's 2015. Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a pretty good joke. Pretty good. <laughs> but, so it's possible. Anything at this point is, is possible, but you have to actually visualize that um, and work toward that every day and take ownership again of your career. Okay, when you're going back, you're going to hear a lot more about the whole law school process from other people on the panel. But I wanted to actually make a, a, a couple of different plugs, two plugs actually. Clinical work, okay? Clinical work in law school is very important and very valuable. When you're evaluating law schools, which one you, you want to attend, look and see if they have good, robust clinical programs. Okay, there's all kinds of clinical work. My wife did work defending women in the federal prison uh, in Connecticut, okay? Um, I did work uh, prosecuting career criminals. Um, you know, other friends did work uh, you know, in labor issues around migrant farm workers. There are all kinds of you know, ways of, of uh, getting that experience. It can be appellate experience. It can be counseling experience. It can actually be litigation experience. I, mean, I, I got into court um, as a law student, into criminal court in, uh, in, in uh, New Haven County. Um, the other plug I would make is for judicial clerkships. Okay? I clerked for Myron Thompson on the federal court in Alabama, um, and he is the nation's expert, judicial expert in, in, in voting rights litigation. Okay? Um, having that kind of experience working for a judge is invaluable because you have a, a mentor who will exist um, over the course of your entire career, and you may actually get exposed to law uh, as a clerk um, that will help you in your substantive practice, or it may actually define your legal career. Okay? Judge Thompson being known as a, 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 a voting rights judge um, inspired many of his clerks to go on to become voting rights lawyers. It's one of the reasons that I had the background to do um, voting rights litigation um, as a junior associate in a big law firm is because I actually worked on major voting rights cases as a law clerk. Okay? Um, you know, and two of my friends who uh, clerked for the judge actually went on to have legal careers in the voting section of the Civil Rights Division. So that's the, that's the preeminent location for a voting rights lawyer. Um, 
how to, how to wind this up. Find your motivation, okay? The law is an honorable career. It can be a profitable career. Uh, it can be a busy, difficult, and frustrating career. Okay. Um, depending upon how you define your goals, uh, you can achieve everything from personal financial security to you know, large um, mission-driven successes. Um, but it really, at the end of the day, is ultimately all about you. Regardless of, of all of the labor statistics that you hear, okay? You, know, you have to actually visualize yourself as that person who goes and succeeds and defines, you know, again, their life path and their goals every single day. When you get up in the morning and you look in that mirror, okay, as a lawyer, I know that I'm actually going to be able to, in my, my job as counsel to the House Judiciary Committee, that I'm going to be able to do some good for someone. I know that I'm going to get on a plane and I'm going to fly to New York with Mr. Conyers and we're going to talk about HR 40 and um, national and international rep reparations. I know that when I walk back into the office on Monday morning, we're going to start our uh, path to uh, the reintroduction of the End Racial Profiling Act. Okay. I know that next month, over this month and next month, I will negotiate with police groups and civil rights groups to introduce the legislation post-Ferguson okay, that will create an accountability structure for state and local law enforcement organizations backed up by accreditation and by the Department of Justice. Okay. That's my drive and motivation to actually get up and go. It's a great thing to do. We've been working on police accountability bills for the last 10 years. I hope that we'll get one this year in the wake of Ferguson. Okay? But when I started in law school, I didn't know that ultimately you know, in 2015 I was going to do that. But I did know from attending uh, conferences like this, talking to mentors, talking to friends, talking to colleagues, that I needed to prepare myself to actually reach those goals. Okay, today is the first day, even if you didn't do it before, is the first day of your preparation of deciding how you want to approach your career, how you want to actually manage that valuable resource. Okay, feel the success in it and know that um, it's something that all of you, you can do. Um, and being a lawyer is a, is a wonderful ride. Uh, it's varied and can vary over the course of a career. And it is indeed, regardless of what you hear on TV, uh, it is an honorable profession. Um, you can do a lot of good with it. Um, and I encourage all of you to take advantage of every resource that you can and to get out there and to pursue those goals. Thanks.